Hey everybody, welcome, welcome. We're continuing our reading of the Book of Mormon. We're in Helaman chapter 6, uh, picking up on number 20. And now it came to pass that when the Lamanites found that they were robbers among them, they were exceedingly sorrowful, and they did use every means in their power to destroy them off the face of the earth. So the Lamanites becoming like really upset with the fact that there's bad people among them and they s s took them off the map. But behold, Satan did stir up the hearts of the more part of the Nephites, insomuch that they did unite with those band of robbers, and did enter into their covenants and their oaths, that they would protect and preserve one another in whatsoever difficult circumstances they should be placed, that they should not suffer for their murders and their plunderings and their stealings. And it came to pass that they did have their signs, yea, their secret signs, and their secret words, and this that they might distinguish a brother who had entered into the covenant, that whatsoever wickedness his brother should do, he should not be injured by his brother, nor by those who did belong to his band, who had taken this covenant. Ah, okay. The Masons had some types of hand signs. Several groups have several signs that they do. It's interesting this is mentioned in this book. And thus they might murder and plunder and steal and commit whoredoms and all manner of wickedness contrary to the laws of their country and also the laws of their God. And whosoever of those who belong to their band should reveal unto the world of their wickedness and their abominations should be tried, not according to the laws of their country, but according to the laws of their wickedness, which had been given by Gedeonton and Kishkumen. Now behold, it is these secret oaths and covenants which Alma commanded his son should not go forth unto the world, lest they should be a means of bringing down the people unto destruction. Now behold, those secret oaths and covenants did not come forth unto Gedeonton from the records which were delivered unto Helaman, but behold, they were put into the heart of Gedeonton by that same being who did entice our first parents to partake of the forbidden fruit, Satan, he's saying. Yea, that same being who did plot with Cain, that if he would murder his brother Abel, it should be known unto the world, and he did plot with Cain and his followers from that time forth. So, they are mentioning Cain and Abel. We have Gedeonton and Kishkumen. Lucifer, we have Lamanites. Remember the chief judge of Samaron, two of them were killed. Cesaron. And also it is that same being who put it into the hearts of the people to build a tower sufficiently high that they might get to heaven. And it was that same being who led on the people who came from that tower into this land, who spread the works of darkness and abominations over all the face of the land, until he dragged the people down to an entire destruction and to an everlasting hell. Entire destruction, dragging to everlasting hell. Sounds quite horrible. Imagine someone dragging you, right? Going into the pit. Yea, it is that same being who put into the hearts of Gedeonton to still carry on the work of darkness and of secret murder. And he has brought it forth from the beginning of man, even down to this time. And behold, it is he who is the author of all sin. The author of all sin, huh? And behold, he doth carry on his works of darkness and secret murder, and doth hand down their plots, handing down plots, and their oaths, handing down oaths. Hmm and their covenants, and their plans of awful wickedness from generation to generation, according as can get hold upon the hearts of the children of men. So uh, an order, an order that hands down its wickedness via plots, covenants, and oaths. They are in accordance with Satan. They serve Satan. They're an order. They're contending people. Descendants of Cain, he's arguing, 
that and also descendants of Gadianton Gadianton like and Kushkumen type personalities but an order appears that they contending that I secretly want to do such a thing and now behold he had got great hold upon the hearts of the Nephites yea insomuch that they had become exceedingly wicked yea the more part of them had turned out of the way of righteousness and did trample under their feet the commandments of God and did turn unto their own ways and did build up unto themselves idols and their gold and their silver okay so they built up idols but also stacking gold and silver and it came to pass that all these inequities did come unto them in the space of not many years insomuch that a more part of it had come unto them in the sixty and seventh year of the reign of judges over the people of nephi and they did grow in their inequities in the sixty and eighth year also to the great sorrow and lamentation of the righteous great sorrow to the righteous and thus we see that the Nephites did begin to dwindle in unbelief and grow in wickedness and abomination while the Lamanites began to grow exceedingly in the knowledge of their God. Yea, they did begin to keep his statutes and commandments and walk in truth and uprightness before him. So they're sort of switching. And thus we see that the Spirit of the Lord began to withdraw from the Nephites because of their wickedness and their hardness of hearts. And thus we see that the Lord began to pour out his spirit upon the Lamanites because of their easiness and willingness to believe in his words. It sounds a lot like what uh, I heard in the Jewish class with the Israel, with the nation, people of Israel. And God, they contended when God went to them and asked them if they will accept. And they said yes. And it came to pass that the Lamanites did hunt the band of robbers of Gadianton and they did preach the word of God among the more wicked part of them, insomuch that this band of robbers was utterly destroyed from among the Lamanites. And it came to pass that the other hand, the Nephites did build them up and support them, beginning at the more wicked part of them, until they had overspread all the land and the Nephites, and had seduced the more part of the righteous until they had come down to take belief in their works and partake of their spoils, and to join with them in their secret murders and combinations. And thus they did obtain sole management of the government, insomuch that they did trample under their feet and smite and rain, and turn their backs upon the poor and the meek, and the humble followers of God. And thus we see that they were in awful state, and ripening for an everlasting destruction, Ripening for an everlasting destruction. The prime moment for the plucking and rotting. And it came to pass that thus ended the sixty and eighth year of the reign of the judges of the people of Nephi. Wow. Okay. So, that's it. That's chapter six. So, we saw quite a bit. They switched places. Lamanites and the Nephites, Nephites losing their faith, Lamanites becoming more faithful. Uh, this sort of bouncing of prosperity and then turning into despotism in a way, and wickedness. So, wow. Nephite government, Ulek, Zedekiah, Ulek in the land of the north, Lehi in the land of the south. Well, we did learn. Didn't we?